giving sight to those who desire vision. Imagine for a moment you serve your country and you do it well, which isn't uncommon. But then you get injured in battle, injured to the point your vision for your life changes. Maybe you lose your sight. Maybe your planned career now needs to change. You once could see, but now you're visually impaired. Or maybe the vision for your life is going off the rails. Just know that you're not alone on this. Today, we're going to give you steps to help you gain vision. For those who have actually lost their physical sight, we actually have a tremendous resource for you. Guys, welcome to the Military Wire with Mike Schindler. This is the podcast where we interview America's most elite men and women who have served this country. We share their stories of overcoming, their proven lessons in leadership, and their journey to finding mission and purpose. And before I go into our guest today, which I'm very excited about, I just want to put a quick shout out to this segment sponsor, Honest Talk International. This organization has a vetted network of experts that are standing by to help our listeners navigate issues related to nutrition, fitness, parenting, relationships, intimacy. Visit their site, honesttalkinternational.com. So today, guys, on the show, I have General Pollock, retired United States Army Major General who served as the Acting Surgeon General for the Army Medical Department the Deputy Surgeon General for the United States Army from October 2006 to March 2007, and also the Chief of the Army Nurses Corps. In addition, General Pollock served as Executive Director for Fox Center for Vision Restoration at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Today, she is helping veterans see. General, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I'm just so excited about this topic. You and I were talking offline a little bit about just the need to get mindset rights that impacts state of mind that then moves to understanding that, uh, you know, how to leverage your skill set. And you've got an interesting shift in your career where now you're consulting with organizations really related to vision issues. Um, and there's an interview, and I want to get into this cool technology that we'll talk about. There's just a ranger who had essentially lost his eyesight not to quit. Uh I want you to tell that story a little bit, kind of pull our, our readers up to speed on this. Okay, thanks. Yeah, when I was serving as the Deputy Surgeon General, I had already gotten engaged in the needs of the visually impaired, particularly our service members who were injured because of the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. And so the nurses over at Bethesda called me and said, hey, General Pollock, we got a couple of army folks over here, you know, would you come and see them? And I said, of course. So came across town in D.C. For those of you who know D.C., some days that's easier than others. And I got in, met with a couple of families, was working my way through this group of troops. And then I saw a sign on a door that said, vision cautions. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what that means. So I knocked on the door and said, hey, LT, I'm Gail Pollock. I'm an Army nurse. Uh, may I come in? Because I'm a nurse. I know that not everybody wants visitors. And I got a really flat, yes, you can come in. And my antenna went up. This is a bad sound. This is a bad sound. I went in and, you know, put my hand on his arm because I noticed that he didn't track me with his eyes when I came in. So I said, hey, tell me what happened. And he said, well, I lost one eye because of an explosion, an IED, an improvised explosive device over in a rock. They thought they could save the other one. They brought me here, and then they took it, that one out. So I'm blind. And he just kind of melted into mm. the bed. And I started thinking, oh, boy, this guy's in a really bad place. So not only had he lost his eyesight, but he was actually, you saw that he was kind of losing hope at the same time. He was losing everything because his dream had always been to serve in the military. He joined the military when he was 17, went to ranger school, got selected as an officer, you know, was working on his, finishing his college degree so he could be promoted to captain. He was fired up. He wanted to be an army ranger for his entire life. And now all of a sudden that had been ripped away. So all of his dreams had been ripped away and no one had talked to him yet about the fact he could still have dreams. So I challenged him, well, what's so cool about being a ranger? And so he started telling me. And as he told me, you could see him filling back up with energy. He got excited again about life. And then I, then I really pulled his chain because I said to him, 
I think you're lying to me because you're a quitter and Rangers aren't quitters. And he sat up in bed, you know, <laughs> disregarding all his other injuries. He only talked about his eyes. And he screamed at me, I said, I'm blind. And I said, you're a quitter. Is how I answered him. I said, I got other blind guys in the army. So what the F is wrong with you? And he kind of fell back into the bed. And he was like, really? There's other blind guys in the army? And I said, yeah, hasn't Scott Smiley been over to see you yet? Didn't anybody tell him you were here? Because if, he, if they told him, he'd be here. He said, no, I haven't talked to anybody. And I said, well, you know, the only reason you're leaving the Army is because you want to. So if you want to stay in the Army, your job right now is to get well. You listen to the, your nurses and your docs. You do your rehab. You get well, and we'll find jobs for you. He ended up going back down to special ops, where he worked as a G3. And the guys laughed. They said, we work in the night. He lives in the night. He tells us stuff we can't even think of. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason that we have to quit when, when our life changes. But we need to know that alternatives are possible. And that's the thing that we don't do in America. And it makes me crazy. Whether we get a disease, whether we lose our eyes, we don't let people know how to cope in spite of that inconvenience. Is it going to radically change your life? Yeah, no, you're yeah. right on this. I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to dive into this a little bit because you, I, I think, oftentimes in in America, maybe it's even human nature uh, that we allow our circumstances to de define who we are, and that circumstance could be whether it's job related or whether it's physically related. But suddenly, we latch onto that as that's our defining moment. Um, and, and what I love about this story, General, is number one, you challenged him, right? You essentially challenged him to be better because he was better. Uh, he was better than the circumstance that he was facing. And I love that. And I think that talks to the importance of, of having people around you when you're going through a difficult time that are willing to challenge you, but also come alongside you. So how did the story end? Where is this guy today? The story ends. He, he stayed in the Army. He retired from the Army. He retired as a major because he was enlisted first. You know, so he finished his college degree. He got promoted to captain. He got promoted to major. He worked in special ops. And now he's running a contracting company down in, for, down in the North Carolina area. He's amazing. And he does all of these bizarre sports now. He's been out climbing mountains that most of us would be terrified to go to. He does the triathlons and the marathons and all that, you know, all of those intense things to show people that we set our own limits. You know, we can, we can set our limits, you know, 10 miles away from us so that we're challenged or we can put ourselves in a little tiny box. But we need to be told that we don't need to live in a box. And I don't think that we tell most people with vision loss that they have options. I'm, I'm morphing a little bit because this gets me really excited because I get to talk about eSight, which is the coolest device that I've seen since 2004 when I started working with the visually impaired. It is the first tool that's out there that restores mobility and quality of life. All of the other tools, you got to sit on your butt and use them. You can't go anywhere. You can't, you know, for most of them, they're too big and clunky to even carry with you. This is a head mobile, what they call a head mounted device, which means you put it on like a pair of glasses and it's supported and you look through it and it's got a couple of LED screens. And so if you have a retinal disease and there's about 52 different retinal diseases that this device helps. And by the way, it was one of the Time Magazine 2017 Technologies of the Year. You know, so it's not that General Pollock just thinks it's hot. You know, the team, the team from the technology experts from Time Magazine thought it was hot too. Yeah. But when, when if you have any residual retina uh, function left, it is able to project to that retina through those two LED screens, what you would normally see. And so it takes a minute to get it adjusted because everybody needs to adjust the, the contrast and the magnification and the amount of shading. 
to make it best for them. But once they do it, we, we laugh when we're, we're, we're testing people on it because as soon as they get it adjusted, it's like they jump. We call it the e-site pop. And you know, as, a, as a, an evaluator, this person's seeing. The next mm-hmm. thing they do is they start looking around for the person that brought them to this experience. And usually when they see each other, they both start crying. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's a man who was, you know, injured or lost his sight for some reason. If it's a woman, they're just so excited. I had a woman do that pop at the Blind Veteran Association meeting last year. And she looked at the gentleman that was with me when she first started seeing. She said, I think I'm seeing a beard. And I said, well, beards are pretty boring. Why don't you lift your head a little bit, lift your eyes, and maybe you'll see something else, like a set of really pretty blue eyes. And she lifted her head and saw his eyes and burst into tears and said, I haven't seen eyes or a face in over 10 years. Oh, wow. That's the kind of life change you get with this tool. Yeah, I saw the tool. And, uh, you know, I'm an old Trekkie. So if you remember the Star Trek, it kind of looked like uh, there was one guy that yeah. wore that visor. Yeah. And it helped him see. And we, right. I remember back in the day thinking, man, wouldn't that be really cool if that ever happened? And that's essentially what we're talking about now with Eastside. How did you get involved in this? I mean, what inspired you? To really yeah, get it's, in it's, it, that's, that's, a, that's a funny story. So I'm in a fellowship up at Harvard and I'm trying to get a patient education company going because I want people to know what's out there if they're visually impaired. And I want to give them the information in clear, easy to understand terms, not the medical gobbledygook that people hear all the time. You know, I'm a nurse, I'm a translator. So I'm working on that project. And so I meet a bunch of venture capital guys. And one of them says to me, Hey, Gail, would you take a look at this product? I've invested some money in it. And you know, it, it got to my heart, but I don't know if it's really going to do anything good. So I sat down and had dinner with the CEO and he started telling me about it. And I was like, Oh, you're so full of crap. You're, you know, you're taking advantage of these folks, just like everybody else. I'm, you know, I'm not believing you can do what you say. Well, generally you don't pull any punches, do you? You just, you just lay it out. Yeah. No, that's, I laugh. That's probably why I retired as a two star, not three star. But anyhow, um, so he said, we're going to do patient evaluations up in Boston. Would you come to Boston? And I looked at him. I said, not on my dime. And he said, I'll bring you to Boston. I think you're going to like it. I'm like, hey, okay. So I went up, watched a couple of very senior people, late 70s, been visually impaired for a long time, wouldn't really listen to the directions. And then a guy came in who was about 60, had lost vision in both eyes, and wouldn't tell people he didn't want to be treated like he was stupid because that's mm. the stigma we have in the u.s if your eyes don't work you must be stupid and i'm going to break that stigma if it's the last thing i do on earth but so he hadn't told anybody but he came in on somebody's elbow they had to bring him in and you know get him seated in the room but after a couple of minutes this guy's playing with the controls and i think to myself hmm that's different and then all of a sudden he goes there's a window in this room and I was like, well, yes, sir, there is. He goes, well, I'd like to go to the window. I said, you want an elbow? He said, no, I'd like to use this and take myself. And I thought, whoa, this is going to be interesting. But he managed to get across this conference room. You know, think of the big chairs, the cables, the boxes, all the crap that we put in conference rooms. And he negotiates around all of that, gets to the window and stands there for a couple of minutes. And then he turns around and says, May I describe the Boston skyline to you? And it made every hair on my body stand up. And I thought, wow, this may not work for everybody, but for the ones I, that it will, it's going to be freaking amazing. Yeah. And it is. So it works for between 60 and 70% of the people that try it. It doesn't work for everybody. I'm out there beating the bushes, trying to find stuff that will work when you're more when you're more vision impaired than this can work with or different types of vision loss. But this is the coolest technology that's out there. And I've been working on vision loss since 2004 
when Senator Inouye challenged the Department of Defense and said to us, what are you doing for the blinded troopers? Man, this is something else. Well, and East Side was recently approved on a federal VA uh, supply schedule, correct? Yes, yes. It's really exciting. Um, the prosthetics people have appro- approved it, and the prosthetics folks are into mobility. So it really made sense that they were looking at it. And now it's possible to procure it. The VA wants to evaluate you to make sure that it's the right device for you. But once they check you out and say, yeah, it's the right device, they're able to purchase it now. And the, one of the things that eSight does that I think is really cool is they have ambassadors to teach you how to use it. And the ambassadors all have vision loss. So they partner you with someone who has vision loss from the same reason that you do. So they already understand what your worries and concerns and questions are going to be, what your struggles have been. Mm. And, yeah, you know, then they sit down and say, okay, let's get going. Jesse, who I had hoped would be on with us today, it took him about three hours to work with his ambassador from eSight. I had found out about Jesse through some of the team down by Fort Bragg. And, you know, when I heard that he was very, very depressed and suicidal, I was like, okay, I need to talk to him. Because service members have been reaching out to me for the last several years when they find one of their buddies in a really bad spot. Hey, General Gale, can you talk to X? And I'm like, well, I can't call them directly. You need to find, you need to get me permission so that I can talk to them. And I'm happy to talk to them because there's no reason that vision issues have to change their life. So I got on the phone with uh, Jesse and said to him, hey, I'm trying to make sure that we get this into the hands of more veterans. So if I help you get this in the short term, will you help me? And he's been amazing. Because he went from not leaving his house, he came to Washington, D.C. with me, and we walked the halls of Congress, and we talked to senator and congressmen and their staff to talk about why eSight needs to be one of the devices that we make sure that the low vision folks around the nation know exists. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's veterans taking the lead again. We're figuring stuff out and we're going to help the rest of society have better lives as a result of our experiences and our commitment to society. Yeah. See, I love that because, you know, I, obviously, I mean, you know this, you know, the army led the way and, and really paramedics, right. Uh, you know, designing that whole system. And, and what I love about this, and, and I know we've got to wrap this up, but what I love about this is those who are visually impaired, have there's there's now technology out there that will hopefully help them gain eyesight which opens up this whole new world which brings back hope which you know allows them to leverage some of the skill sets they had before or maybe even develop new ones and i think the point i want to drive home is it's cool that there's technology to do that and i think it's so important that those of us that do have our eyesight that have all our capabilities really as vision works both ways, right? Not only what we see, but what we feel and what the direction of our life is taking us. And I think, you know, General, you are helping those who have come across a bad situation improve quality of life. And I love that. How, how can people lear, learn more about uh, eSight? I think the easiest way is to go to their webpage. And I believe, please check this because this is coming from my brain and I'm not positive that it's right. But I believe that the e- that the site is everyone b- deserves to see. Okay. And where they can type in little e, capital S, as in Sierra, I-G-H-T dot com, and it'll come up that way too. And I love this. General, I, I thank you for being on this show. I thank you for doing what you're doing, being out there. And I, I, you're giving people vision in two ways. I mean, not only are you helping them, those who can't see, see again, which is beyond commendable, but giving people hope. And uh, I just want to salute your efforts. You know, the Navy, we have this term Bravo Zulu. And, and, and I mean, that's the highest essentially salute I can give you is that Bravo Zulu right there. And just saying, thank you for all your efforts on this. And, and thank you for giving hope back to Jesse and for that Ranger 
and many others that I know you're touching. This, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to spend my days because I believe that if we work together on this, we can significantly change quality of life. Because I'm, I know I'm going into a new issue, Mike, but vision loss is one of the top 10 disabilities in the country. So let's you and I talk about that offline and maybe we can do even more. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, you guys have heard an amazing several stories and the importance of vision in people's life is critical, whether it be eyesight or whether it be having a vision for your life. And as you heard from General today, uh, there are tools and, and, and battle buddies that are willing to come alongside those who are looking to seek and gain their vision back, whether injured in combat or from other means. And Eastside, I encourage everybody to visit eastside.com. Take a look at that. Again, that's Echo, Sierra, Indigo, uh, GHT, and I can't remember the other the other three, but uh, Eastside.com. Golf or no. That's Dango. right, golf. Yeah, he, yep, that's thank you. <laughs> Good, bro. <laughs> You know, always count on a general to, to make sure that we lead the way. So, um, again, Gail, thank you for being a part of the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And everybody, just keep focused. You can do things much more than you ever dreamed.